welcome to Parade Handmade. This is the second part of a multi-series in recycling and upcycling clothing. Now last week you'll have seen that I started on one of those to-do projects which I'm really enjoying. It's my little favourite time of the day and I'm not going to show you this too much at the start but this is my lovely little bag that is now felted and sewn into shape and can be now used. However, I want to make it gorgeous. So I'll show you my ideas and post it on Friday. And by the way, welcome to my new subscriber. I'm really, really thrilled that you subscribed, number 23. <laughs> so I'm dying to show you what I'm gonna do. This is my plan, this is my bag. There were a few parts from that jumper. This is the bag. This was the neck and the little, you know, the front to the back, just the neck part that was cut off in one piece. There was another piece that was taken off around here, which I have in my hair now. So you'll notice in the in the photographs or in the video when you see me that I have that in my hair just as a big bobbin. It was a double piece. It went all the way around. Basically, it was this. And the piece, just the inch that went around there. So I just folded it in two and wrapped it around my hair. You'll see it later. So this now, if it had been one piece, this piece had been left in one piece, it would have been great. But I don't mind because I've discovered I got an idea for this for the inside of my bag. I'm going to put that on the bag. I'm going to bring it down like that. So that will be secured onto the inside of the bag, I'm making an inside pocket for, you've guessed it, I'd say by now. And I'll sew it all the way around there as well. First, before I embellish the outside of the bag. And basically that's going to be a pocket for yes you've guessed it my phone so that's what i'm going to do with the neck so that's those two pieces now these two pieces are left over these two lovely pieces and what i'm going to do with these is now not straight away and not today but i'm going to you can see the lovely shape on them so i've tried this on believe it or not on my leg put my my foot in here and my it, my foot comes out the bottom then so basically it's like a spat you know spats that you used to wear you used to wear them over your shoes in the 20s 1920s and I'm going to embellish down here and there'll be a kind of a leg warmer but we'll keep that for later on maybe an autumn project meanwhile I'm going to pause here just in case I need to edit and it'll be nice and easy just one second I'm really excited about decorating this and I'm so excited that I've grabbed everything in sight but obviously I have to narrow it all down I felt this little piece this is a piece of wet felted material from a few years ago and I also have these other little pieces where's my other you know you'll find that you have little bits and bobs saved around the house or in your craft box this is another little piece of them um, a little beaded piece that I did years ago it's tiny tiny beads and they're on a piece of leather with the the intention was to make a brooch <clears throat> and I still could but I never got around to it so what I'm going to do is honor the effort and the sore neckness of making this and attach that and use it as an embellishment. And I'm I'm definitely going to do that. That'll be a happy thing. This with this, I think I'm going to make strawberry. I have this thing about strawberry since uh, childhood. I had a beautiful little dress with strawberries on it and I'm going to. So this is a lovely colour and it reminded me of the colours of strawberries. I might have to tweak it a bit. I might take out some of that and add it to the top, but I'll probably make a strawberry to pattern. So that will be the applique part. In the meantime, it may not be this colour. I'm going to make a kind of a haze at the back and I'm going to use this. This is like an upturned scrubby brush. You can use a sponge. This is for felting, needle felting. So I'm going to put it under here just to give you a little idea of what I'm planning. So I'm going to make a bit of a haze, you know, across the bottom area of the bag just to give a nice kind of cloudy, floaty background, kind of atmospheric. So it's different now when you lay it out just like this. Now I can take this off in a minute when I'm actually doing it, but I'll just to give you an idea. So this is the felting pen. Anyone who's done it before will know. I call it a pen. I suppose it is a pen. <clears throat> and um, I just go directly in on the sponge, over the sponge or over my brush as I have it here. These are handy. I must get a bigger one, in fact, because obviously it will be nice to have it a little bit wider. But look. This works. Just be careful if you're doing it on a sponge that you don't stab your knee or your hand or whatever else, which is incredibly possible. So maybe put a tray on your knee and then off you go. So you can just get your, give it a bit of time, make sure it's adhered really well. And once you have your background in place, 
then you can get you know your embellishments and I have some embroidery threads too which I adore so I'm going to use you know appropriate ones of those whichever I find I may not use that color I may even change this but you know I'm just showing you the ideas and I have had La Panda uh, jewelry designs for years since 2007 and since then people have given me their old bits of beads and jewelries and I use this as jewellery bead heaven in case I need to do a repair that um, I don't have the bead for and I could very easily find maybe a little bit of a bead in one of these jars now this is not my only jar but there is a lot of this jewellery that I will never use so my intention was always to make some boho beads and jewellery out of it and use it to embellish things such as this so I would raid that <laughs> and find fun things in there and add it to this so it's going to be a little bit of a collage, a fun thing. I have a lovely bag of little beads there and I have tons of other beads, but I have these beauties. Oh, there's some lovely string. I can use that as well. You can embroider it. Where's my little, my little bag? Oh, there they are. Right. So I have these beauties. They're tiny little seed beads and they just make me smile, that multicoloured thing. And I think they'd be beautiful on here. Now, I think I've got two. This is typical me. I've got a bit maybe two color schemes going on here this strawberry you know green and red and it would be beautiful nice and simple a few little strawberries on the bottom you know maybe three or four or five or whatever just a little pile a little buzzy bee going by and a bit of grass or i could go all out and just embellish like mad which is really the mood i'm in now if you haven't detected that one last thing that i might use and probably will try and incorporate because I do like a little bit of glitzy. So if I am going to use my little brochy, I'll put in some sparkly string. So I've got some gold that's quite thick, but it might work with the wool. And if not, I'll use a little bit of this gold. I use this to, to sew on parade labels onto um, wrist warmers and things like that and anything that I've made out of felt or material. So that's that's what I used to, to sew on my labels, but it's I've plenty of it and I've got it in silver as well. So I think gold might be the, the order of the day, though. So there I'm going to stop there because I could go absolutely mad. See, there's another brooch. This is for the hats. These are for my berries. I've started. They take ages, so I might have to think of an alternative. This sewing around the edge with the base there takes ages. This was a felted piece. But that would be kind of nice there too. I don't know. Look at, no, I'm going to keep these for the berries. I'm going to be strict and coordinated. That is for my brother-in-law. Whose name is Ben. And I need to give that to him for a present that I made him last year. Now, I'm off to do this. And I will show you how I'm getting on. Good luck with yours. Go for it. This finally has come to a point that I can start. I've turned my jumper inside out, my bag, which is now my bag, inside out. And this is the back of it. And to make sure when I'm working on the back of it, this is the inside pocket on the back of it for the phone. Um, I've put in a little bit of card here. So always just keep a little piece of card in between so that you don't sew the front to the back or, you know, felt through or whatever it is you're working on in the back that it's separate and that your other piece is protected. And that goes, it's about an A4. So it's bigger than the size of my pocket and that's going to work. So what I've done is, she says with all confidence, so I've decided on a pattern. I'll show you just after this, but I want to get the pocket done first. So I want to attach it from the inside and I've hunted and found my embroidery thread, which is the only bit of navy embroidery thread that I have got, but I think it's just going to blend in nicely. It's nothing for, it's not for fancy. It's just to adhere it. And later on the front of the bag, maybe I can decorate it if it shows through and it probably will show through a little. So I can decorate it there with um, something that I find that's going to just make it look, you know, camouflage the stitching. So I'm going to pause here and get a little move on and show you the progress then. So I'm just getting started on darning. So this is the full six strands of the embroidery thread because if I had a little piece of navy wool that one might work as well but I'm just going to work with this I'm just going to tie a knot in it I'm making it up as I go along really because it's not a serious project so you can too as long as you have half a clue 
and even if you don't have half a clue. So my first plan was to secure this little part. So I've pinned it in place the way I want it and far enough from the top so that when the phone is sitting in here, it'll come to, depending on the size, but you don't want it to hop out of your bag easily, but you want it in a place where you can access it easily. So I put it in the middle of the bag. And what I've done is I've left the tags for the moment, just in case you want to stick a pen or something, you know, in and it'll hold it upright as well. So I don't know. It depends. It could be something else you could put in there. You could think of all sorts. So I'm not ready to chop it off. And if I don't need to, I won't. So that's it. I have my knot and my thread. And I am going to start. It's so exciting. Now, don't put the knot in the front of the bag, obviously. So hide it under there. I think I'm just going to top sew it on. No running stitch. Top sew. <laughs> top sew. I'm going to top sew it on because I can. Because I don't know why. I just fancy it. It's kind of like it's it's going to be nice and I don't know secure and even and quick. I suppose relatively, although it's still only a strand. Do you know I've changed my mind? <clears throat> I'm going to do a back stitch all along. I'm going to have to turn it sideways now for to be able to show you what I'm doing. Back stitch rather than a running stitch, I think, unless you could do a running stitch very close to, you know, stitches very close to each other. But let me see how this will work. The fact the card is under there. Definitely do a running stitch or a blanket stitch if you want, but I don't really want to show too much in the, the other side. Do you know what? Running is fine. Once you do them close together, you don't have to do a back stitch. You could if you want it. Just something nice and secure and neat. It's going to show up neat on the other side. You could even do a few in a row as long as you're not. Like, this is going to be camouflaged on the front somewhat with the decorative ribbon or something fun. I could put something over it. So I'm not going to, the, as I say, the stitching police is not out. So it's so comforting to have this card on the back so you can just sew away. Now I'll show you my progress in a second. So now just a quick update. I was sewing the back to there and I realized if I left this part empty, I could, or not sewn. So I've sewn all the way around from the place I wanted to fold down from all the way around to there nice and secure that's a pocket so I didn't sew across there I was tempted to because it looks so nice but anyway that's going to be a separate little pocket so now when I put it down I'm going to do a running stitch all the way around there as we did before leave this open and leave this open and we have this double pocket which is great so you can put your key fobs in there or your thing for getting your trolley or you know what I mean I'll keep it short so that we can have a short video if you like Hello, sweet pea. What are you doing up here? I ha oh, you're going to hurt yourself. Yes, you're so beautiful. Aren't you? Yes, he's a good. I have to do work here, you know. I don't live a cat's life. You know, it's really lovely. Thank you so much. I'm protecting you from the prickles of the fins. Oh, babe, what makes you want to be here? This is so unusual. <laughs> Oh, darling, you're gorgeous. You're gorgeous. Right. <laughs> It'll pause, so. <laughs> so now I've turned it back inside out or right side out. Pocket is in the back there. That's grand. So I'm just going to design this now just to put in the background, that kind of atmospheric needle felted background. So I'm just going to do a little bit of natural. I'm doing the strawberries. In the end, I did strawberries, but it's not going to be simplistic either. I, I find it very hard to do a very simplistic. This is happens to be extra fine merino. I know it's a it's it's a bit of a um a deal to use that for embellishment, but it's nice and it was near to hand. And I have um a lot of organizing to do, so I don't mind just taking a little bit of that and using it. So a little bit goes a long way when you're doing something like this. It's very fine. So it's not going to be a big deal. So that's a little bit of that. That's a little bit that I took out earlier. I want to do it sort of natural greens, a little bit of woozy kind of, you know, smoky kind of purple lilac in the back. Just 
you know it's not realistic obviously it's just for that little bit of atmosphere behind the strawberries and I've decided to as long as it works out right use this to do the details you know those little seeds that are in a strawberry there's a strawberry that Ditsy Designs did one time it used to oh it is it's scented still it's cutesy we don't have any more now still but they're gorgeous and they have lavender in there and I can actually still smell that that is about five years old but I just wanted to get the, the shape of a strawberry I happened to see it I wasn't going to bother because I've already cut these out but I happened to see it inside and I thought that's a grand little strawberry never questioned it so I just brought it in with me I was nearly going to stick it on but I think it's just too much of a prominent thingy but do you see those little pips I'm going to use this to do them on my own strawberries so I'll do that later before I adhere them and meanwhile I'm going to show you then carry on with this so yes that's what I'm doing I'm teasing it out just to give you an idea it's very simple it can be as complicated or simple as you want and no one's going to question it once it's done so don't worry if you're going to do it right or wrong you know you always have um oh, second thoughts later could have done it that way or mm, that might have been a, but you could do that forever and you because there's so many <laughs> ideas no many things you could do I mean, it's endless you will never get to the end of that so you must be happy at some point that you have completed for the moment as best you can or else you'll never do anything else i've had some techie tr trouble today i always have techie trouble because i'm not a tech brain and it just kind of annoys me it gets in my way so the big boys are bugging me at the moment uh this time it's google and they're grand and all you know and i have my little ads there more for the keyword planner than anything but yeah, that's kind of looking better isn't it but what they want you to do now is even though we've been advertising for years just a small budget it's uh, for ages and ages it is and uh, now they want you to verify again you know, that you own your business and all that we've done all that kind of thing but there's obviously more you know it's all to do with safety on the internet and it's all very worthy and everything and i think it's a good thing but i know i'm grand i'm not a big you know criminal and i just watch routing and trying to look for documentation to prove that it's your site and all that thing and who you are and your address it's like oh come on really you've got so much else that you need to do and you can just go down a rabbit hole so what i did i made it into a positive experience i you know i like that little blend i'll take out that knot well you won't i won't i won't Anyway, I turned into a positive experience when I came across files that were just clogging things up. I have a lot of paper files as well as digital. So I just teased them out. So I've made a little bit of space at least. And it, there was something other than time wasting done this morning. Uh, so that's a good thing, I suppose. <laughs> so there you go. I think that's going to be it. Now what I'm going to do now is get my little... You can do it, use the sponge for this if you like. That's just for the shadows in between. Now let's just say they're going to be going on top later. With their... And this is going to look finer when it's actually needle felted in. So what I'm going to do is, put that aside. This is my brush business for anyone who hasn't done it before. You can use a sponge like a baby sponge or, um, you know, something that's nice and square. So you can guess where the edges are when it's under there. You don't really need to um, put that piece of plastic in or a piece that piece of card. It'll probably help with moving things around. But anyway, just slide that in under your felt. And off you go. Stop, 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 stop. This is why you need a sponge between you and the needle. Yep. And keep your fingers away. Basically, the little snags on the these I've got three needles in this you can do it with one it'll take you three times slower no yes <laughs> it'll be three times slower or you can get when I have a big one I can't put my hand on it now it has eight needles in it I'm not even sure if I have eight needles to put in it I think I might just about do that but this will probably do for this it's fine so you just stab away until you are happy that your wool your merino your new merino atmospheric wool here 
is in place and try and do your needle at a kind of a, a 90 degree angle or at least straight in straight out this can be okay you can do this but with this kind of thing when you're doing something flat straight in and out if you're doing it on the side when you're doing like a little buzzy bee or something else well then fine but just be careful that you take it out at the same angle and don't stab yourself um there's two reasons for that the stabbing yourself part yes we don't want to do that and the other th part is it breaks the needles if you come in at an angle and then you are even tempted to straighten it up it's just the, it's more likely that you'll break your needles and they're not cheap and you have to stop and you have to jig it up again and it's a pain so that is why it is much better not to break your needles same with the sewing machine isn't it break your needles <clears throat> so now i have teased out all of the felt just teased it out in a kind of an atmospheric backgroundish style it's nothing exact don't worry if you're not thinking you're doing it right it's fine i have my three needle pen the felting pen it's got three little needles in there felting needles special ones with little snags you have to buy them especially for this have my sponge under no my sponge yeah or my little bristle brush as you can see under there to protect the other side and it's not on my knee but if it was i'd have that for sure but even so that can be kind of small you can still stab yourself so be careful keep your fingers away and just stab away at it and what you're trying to do is blend the um the yarn in together the two strands the strands of the the overlap the overlay and the, the base so you're just trying to just in i don't know what the word is i'm trying to look for a good word but just make sure that you make sure it adheres and make sure it's not going to come off again and just keep stabbing away and don't worry about exactly how it's going to come out a lot of this is going to be covered over by your pattern later or whatever you can come over it with you can sew over it embroider over it this is a great way to decorate things um be careful if you're going to decorate something that's already knit hand knit that's not been felted it can work you can do it if it's nice and tight but you can break the fibers and you can break the stitch and then maybe lose some of your i don't know so just be careful just do a little bit of a trial area but on felted material it's usually just perfectly fine so i'll step away at this and hopefully i'll be able to show you a little bit better later uh, as to the progress so thumbs up go for it So I'm coming to the end now of that atmospheric background and as you can see it's pretty much out here there's a few places I can see from the side now that need a little bit extra there there for sure but you get the gist and you can touch it and it's kind of all part of the same piece now uh, except for the odd spot so now you know what to expect this is very thin and fine and it's taken me a while because I only have my three needle pen, but I haven't broken a needle and I haven't stabbed myself. So two victories. Now I am going to get on and do the little bits of sewing on my strawberries <laughs> uh, I'll just do those little pips you know those little pips that they have I'll do a series I'll use um dark you might no I wanted to use gold so to have a little bit of sparkle in there so I'm going to use that if it works and if not I'll get it maybe something else if all else fails I'll go back and I'll use a little bit of embroidery thread I'm not entirely sure if I'll back them because these weren't I actually thought they were felted onto a base but they were not it's just pure felted wet felted so a piece for embellishment i suppose and i might simply adhere them and then sew them on with a little stitch top stitch oh, or i might sew them on with a top stitch around the sides and then you know for speed what i could do as well i could just glue them on glue gun and then embellish them on the side because i do like to make a finish on the edge i could glue them all together in a shape and you know, there's various ways of doing it you could put them on a base 
I'm not sure. Oh, I could iron a little bit of just the interfacing. Wouldn't that be good to use for patchwork? That would be good. Keep it nice. Give it a little bit of a, a sturdiness to it and then adhere it. And another thing I could do if I was feeling brave. Now, let me see if I have an old piece. No, I don't. I'll just do it with this. I could actually felt it, just felt it on. But am I willing? Yeah, I could do that. I could. Look, it would do it very well. <laughs> that might be the thing. I think that might be happening. So I might felt that. Needle felt it, since I have my needle felting out. Needle felt them on in its position. And then embellish over that. Because it doesn't really matter if some of your... This is all going to show in the back, by the way. You can put a whole piece over that later to, to hide it if you want, but it's going to be on the inside, so it won't matter. So there you go. I'll show you the update a little bit later on. Da -da 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 -da. I'm just adhering these to, in the right place, to the jumper. And that's it. They were felted pieces, wet felted pieces that I had before. They didn't have a substrate on, underneath. They weren't on a scarf or anything like that. It was just pure wool wet felted together. I'll show you that in another video. Uh, it's all very simple. It's just a little, everything's just a process. And then after that, it's what you do with it. And I've turned them upside down. You might have noticed it was a little bit too much green. I've left a little bit in just for the artiness of it there's always a bit of a stray leaf around but in general I want to have a strawberry as much looking like a strawberry as possible and what I'm going to do is felt it all in like this and then I put a little stalk on them and then I will put the little beadies the little flex in for the seeds that you find in strawberries and I'm going to do these two as well and just to keep them in their places and then what I can do is I can embellish over that if I make a big plan, a definite plan beforehand, I'm bored then while I'm doing it. I don't want to have it all laid out before me. I, I want to inform it as I go. And you'll make better decisions anyway. You'll make, once you have a general idea, the creativity comes out as you're doing it. You're going to come up against new challenges and new little tweaks and changes. And your brain is going to delight in that and finding the answers. And then you're going to come up with something that's really lovely that you wouldn't have expected had you planned it all from the start. Because you're not touching and feeling and seeing all the colours and seeing how they lift together or, or fall back together or whatever it is they're doing on the on your page or, or, or on your work. So what I've done is I've taken this. This is thicker than my lovely fine thread that I was going to use. So this was the alternative, which is quite nice and it's working really well. So I did it on the double on a darning needle and tied a knot in the bottom to join the two pieces together. I saw you were doing a buttonhole or something or a button. So I'm coming in from the back. I just want to show you how I'm doing these stitches there. I'm not sure what they're called and I'm doing these pips or seeds alternatively you know like zigzag zigzag and then I'm filling in the gaps like maybe a diamond shape all the way down that's I'm guessing so I'm coming in from the top of the stitch from the back and I'm pulling so I've pulled it through and what you do is you go in beside it really close beside it I have the card underneath there so I don't go through to the other side so I'm going to go in beside it very close, but not into the same hole. Yeah, I suppose you could if you wanted, but better not. And then a tiny little stitch down the length that your pip is going to be. Then you loop your thread around. Your double thread. And then pull it through. And then just keep your stitch nice and long. I've pulled it a little tight there because of what I was doing with the one hand, but it still worked out fine. See that way? And then you go back in where you just came out, just beside it. And then you come out at the top of your next stitch. So I'll put the next stitch, let's say, in between, whoops, in between the leaves there. A little bit further. The top of the stitch, now remember, there. 
It's a guessing thing. You're never going to notice this later, but you're just trying to get it as even as possible. And as you see, they're tiny little loops kind of secured to the top and the bottom. You come out the hole, back in beside it, a tiny stitch. Try and take a little bit of the backing material with it just to secure it more. Loop your thread around. You can hold it with your hand like that with one finger when you have two hands and then pull it through just to keep the shape and not so that you don't pull it. See now, don't pull it too, too tight. Just keep it at a nice tension. And then you go back in right beside it and come back out. See, I'm doing a zigzag up, down, up. So we'll go down to there as though I'm coming in at the top of the next stitch. Now, you keep on going do, 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 all the way down to the bottom. And it won't be as slow as that, don't worry. You're doing it with two hands. So now I just thought I'd show you the back. It's going to be a little bit of a crisscross, crisscross from where you went from stitch to stitch. Now you can leave this the way it is or later on you can just put a, put a nice piece of cotton over the whole design and then secure it on the inside. If you want to stop, if you want to cover these over and maybe prevent them from snagging or if they're in a very small area like possibly they might only be on the strawberries more or less or whatever your design is then you could just do a small patch over them and then secure it just to kind of give it a little bit of less likely that it's going to come apart later or snag in something and just mess up your design on the front so now so then basically you bring your when you're getting too short on the thread you bring it through to the back and then nice and neatly, not showing through to the front, you just go in and out and in and out a few times here. And I'm not going to do it. That was my left hand. I can normally do things with my left hand, but not when I'm looking through lens. Oops, a little bit bigger than that. Just a little bit. Till you feel it nice and tight. So it's not going to come back through later. And then just come along with your... Now that's nice and... Whoa, I'm taking the thread. Uh, yeah, nice and tight. And then I'm going to leave a little bit of a length because... It'll prevent it from going back through too easily. If it was too short right up to the edge, it could pop through. And then later on, I can cover the whole thing over and it should be fine. So now I think we're nearly there. I'm not going to finish the whole bag, obviously. There's my strawberry. It's nearly done, nearly done. I have a couple more to do at the bottom. Let me get it in focus for you. And that is what I'm working on. So I am going to just work away on it and show you next week. And I'll probably start another project next week so that uh, we don't have to stay on the same project for too too long i'll show you what i've done with this hopefully now i'll get onto it during the week i'll do a little bit more of this on this little lad and those as well put in my little uh stitches they're chain stitches i believe um, it's coming to, it's coming back to my mind now my strawberries are more red they're tomato red in the picture that i'm looking at on the phone this is my phone i'm shooting with but they're actually much redder in there a bit more red some of these, these, these have a little bit of um, pink on them, so they look a little bit moldy. So I might add a little bit more red into my strawberry there just to give it a little bit less of a moldy look. <laughs> but it's fine. It's nice. I think I'll, it's kind of nice. It's kind of natural. And then, of course, I'm going to have to embellish more, but it just depends on how much time I have. So I'll show you next week. Good luck with your projects. I'm going to actually do a little bit of an ending video in a few minutes and then edit it later. So I'm not going to say good luck with your projects just yet. I'll see you in a few minutes. So now, there you go. That's my bag. It's not finished. You know that's not finished. But that's my little strawberry. I'm going to copy it onto the other pieces and continue on with my design. And at least I have a bag I can work with in the meanwhile. I can go shopping. And now you can see what you can make from your jumper. I have those other pieces as well. Um... I'm not going to, I was saying I'd do this for a winter or an autumn project, an autumn project so I can wear them in the winter. So they are going to be my spats. They're the arms. So the arms were just cut off, remember? Like this, down along the seam. And I will use those to make glorious kind of spats come leg warmers in the winter. And they're made, obviously, already. But I want to, I'll decide if I need to take that cuff off. It's a little bit tight. I'm not sure, I can't really remember, maybe. And um, if not, I'll just fiddle about with them and then I'll felt a little pattern on the side on both of them. And um, 
that shouldn't take too long actually that should be a bit of a fun project a nice thing but i'll do it in the autumn i promise and um, we can you know see where we can go from that you might be able to do it as well the other thing was this this is my bobbin i don't know if you can see it that's the other piece i did from the the off cuts and it's just a long it's like a big long hairband but it's too long for your head and even if i double it over actually hairbands don't really work on my head for the shape it kind of slips off the back so i'm better off with using it as a big thick bobbin but it's great because it holds the ponytail well, the, the ponytail up and yeah great so thanks for coming along next week i'm going to i'll show you the results of that as i do a little bit more with it and i will do i think what we'll do next is the the blue the blue sweatshirt the big oversized blue sweatshirt i want to put the van patch on that someone gave me as a present it's a van patch so it's like the front of a minibus you know kind of camper van thing and um like that it's a plain big sweatshirt i haven't got it here actually but it's a big oversized pale blue sweatshirt that i love and i'm dying to do it so that's going to be the next project and i'm going to thank you now thank you for my new subscriber number 23 uh, i've already said that but i'm just thanking that person one more time and um also like and subscribe if you'd like to get some more uh videos like this one and good luck with your projects this week i hope you do very well and have a go with that it's not hard it look it takes longer to show you than to actually do it i keep telling myself that as well because you get a bit daunted with projects but when you do them you're like sure that only took me 20 minutes to you know even if you have a half an hour or even an hour you'll get an awful lot done in an hour so give it a whirl go for it and if you have any questions or queries or things you think i might know about just stick them in the comments and i'll see what i can do or we can find out together thanks a million for watching mm -hmm.